What is good, everybody? Juliana Page here, and I'm going to share with you today this thought, this practice, this hopefully new way of living that you'll fall in love with, but it's all about going towards the fear. And I wish that somebody would have told me this earlier, but it's one of those things that you're really just determined to. It's never quite something that will feel comfortable, but it can become something that is your norm. The more you take risks, the more that you know that you can keep taking them. The more you lean into that discomfort, the more you know that you survive. <laughs> the more you challenge yourself, the more you realize who you are and what you carry. So you start seeing the rewards of going towards the fear that those far outweigh you being small, you playing you know, you playing smaller, you becoming smaller, you diminishing yourself, you talking down to yourself. You've seen that movie before. You've seen how it's kept you stuck. You've seen how it's allowed you to keep living the same experiences, different people, same experiences. You've seen how it's held you back, right? But you know that there's more ahead. So there, there's some point where you decide, are you going to keep watching those same movies? Or are you going to live yours, right? So here's the thing. Going towards the fear doesn't have to be some crazy epic thing like skydiving or something like big and adventurous that you think of. A lot of times it's choosing to leave a place that you know that you're not called to be at or called to stay at, but it's been providing you comfort and a lifestyle that's been nice for you, but you know that there's no fulfillment there. You know that there's no joy there, you know that there's ultimately no future there. There's more of the same, if not worse, right? That takes going towards the fear of not knowing what's over here. Because a lot of times you got to leave this first before something else starts to form over here. But you got to be willing to do that, right? Other times it could be leaving a relationship, right? That you know is not for you, but you've invested so much into it that you feel like you owe it to just stick it in there, right? But really though, and is that going to allow you to evolve into who you've been put on this earth to be and to impact and influence the way you're designed to? Well, I'm going to go with no. It doesn't have to be something that is, you know, leaving something that's unhealthy. It can even be leaving things that are good for you. Um, but a lot of times there's a breakup with what is, is the best way to put that. There's a stepping into something new and that's always going to be scary in a lot of ways. It's never going to feel right because there's so many unknowns and we like the knowns. We like being able to think about it. We like being able to, you know, have all of our human senses aware of what's next to be able to control details and have a sense of structure or expectancy. We like that when things are out of our control, when we're blindsided, where we have no clue what's going to happen next. The surrender to that, the acceptance of that, the moving forward and navigating that freaks humans out, right? <laughs> so how do you go towards the fear? You learn to love doing it. You learn to know that every new level, there's going to be some fear. There just is. There's going to be unknowns. There's going to be things that make you uncomfortable. There's going to be things that catch you off guard, right? But you still choose to go towards it. That's you're going to go towards it because on the other side of fear is the next version of you. It is somebody who you're going to become. There, there's some process, there's some growing, there's some going through that's going to expand you, that's going to grow you, that's going to allow you to step into more that you wouldn't have otherwise done if you choose that, right? Uh, a lot of times we resist, we get stuck, we shut down, right? And, and things can get into us, right? It's, it's that example that you hear where you're sailing on water and you're solid, even if there's a hole in your boat, <laughs> until you get water in the boat, then your ego down, right? And other things start piling on top of you, because you didn't choose to go for it, right? It's like, um, this is a, maybe not the best example, but you get it, right? Like if you're on monkey bars, and you're swinging forward, if you hesitate, and you don't grab something, eventually, you're going to fall right? If you don't think fast enough, you, you throw yourself into situations basically that weren't meant for you. And it's harder to recover from those. Okay. So the practice of going towards the things that scare you usually opens up more because it requires you to become something different. All right. So why is that important? That's important because that doesn't sound fun. 
right? Like, okay, I get it. Like logically that makes sense to me. I get that I need to keep going after things. They freak me out. I get that staying the same is limiting in some kind of way, but why is that important? It's important because you can actually enjoy it. You can actually take a shortcut. So you're welcome. A lot of people want a shortcut. They want a quick fix. I'm not giving you that. But for example, if you know that ultimately your goal is true fulfillment and joy, me personally, I want the easy way there. Just saying, okay? Like I don't need to go in this wilderness for many seasons <laughs> to get there, right? I want somebody to tell me the shortcut. Like tell me how I don't have to go through the school of hard knocks in a lot of ways. Not that life isn't going to teach you some really beautiful lessons. It does. But I don't want to learn all my lessons from painful, dysfunctional things that I really shouldn't be going through. There's going to be hard stuff. And I get that. And life is going to do that. But the extra, the extra, I don't know. And wisdom, when you get some wisdom, you save yourself a lot of pain, right? So I'm saying, give me the shortcut, which is wisdom. So I'm going to help you out with that today. So here's the thing. How you do it is interesting. And I know I resisted this forever, which is why I said I wish somebody would have told me this earlier, would have helped me see that this is just a practice that you can embrace, right? I had to go through many turbulent experiences to come to this place, but I will share. So I did a, man, it was a yoga teacher training years ago. I had no clue why I signed up for that thing. <laughs> I had no aspirations of being a yoga instructor, opening a studio, teaching yoga, none of that. But I couldn't deny that I knew that I needed to do that. Part of that was to invest in some self-care because of the work environment that I was in and to just take care of me. And unless I invest in it, I'm the type of person that wouldn't do it. So that was part of it, but I had no clue what I was stepping into or what was going to happen. And it was the hindsight that brought me to 2020. So hindsight for you, right? So that you don't have to go through a long few years of yoga teacher training. What I learned was that I had a faulty way of showing up in the world. It's a way that works. It's one that is accepted. It is one that is nurtured. It is one that is celebrated in a lot of ways, but it is one that was unhealthy and dysfunctional and really not serving me. Okay. I learned a lot from that, but it was not serving me. So this way of showing up is one where you think your way through everything. You lean on your own understanding. You push, you push, you push, because you're just led to believe that if you just work harder and outwork everybody around you, you'll be successful. And there's some truth to that. You'll get some really great outcomes. But who do you become in that process? And what are you losing in that process? Nobody talks about that part. They talk about gains. I want to talk about the gains. My money gains, right? My connection gains, right? My house gains, my car gains, whatever, right? Like that's what you want to talk about. But is that true fulfillment and joy? Who are you in the midst of all that gaining stuff, right? To gain the world and lose your soul? Check that song out if you haven't listened to that in a minute, right? There's truth to it. There's truth to it. But you got to have wisdom to really take that in and apply it, okay? So I had a faulty way of showing up. I was pushing. I was hustling. I was going after things. I was attached to outcomes. I was obsessing over outcomes that didn't even happen yet. And I could not just be still. I couldn't be present. I couldn't enjoy life. That was totally foreign to me because I learned to push. I learned to achieve. I learned to have eight different plans because the first one was never going to work, right? Like I just knew that. And so going to yoga, <laughs> right, taught me how to sit for long periods of time which might seem incredibly simple, but that was the hardest thing to freaking do for somebody who was a doer. So all you doers out there, all you achievers out there, I feel you, I see you, but man, sitting on your butt, I feel those humans and I see those humans for learning how to do that and cultivating some of that in their life, right? To be still and know, I had no clue what the heck that meant. To, to sit there and like, we're, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this for hours. We're gonna, we're gonna breathe. Now we're going to watch thoughts or release thoughts. Like what? We're going to do this for hours, right? Like <laughs> what? I mean, it was the most challenging thing, but 
I invested in it and I was going to see it all the way through. And I knew there was something in that for me. And man, it really, what it was teaching me. And here is the lesson. Wait for it. It was teaching me to move from here to here. I had no clue how to move from my mind, which was really good. I was really good at being all up in my headspace. I had no clue how to move from my mind to my heart. And everything that I wanted in life, everything that I needed in life, everything that I craved in life, whether it's even creativity, being seen, building community. And you know, for somebody who's an introvert, it's really hard to be community when you're not social. Just gonna throw that out there, right? So everything that I was called to, speaking, communicating, writing, being a messenger, <laughs> right? All of that was never going to happen if I didn't move from here to here. I had no freaking clue. That didn't make sense to me at the time, right? But what I was learning was to slow down, was to be in the present moment, was to accept what is without needing it to be any different, without my inner narrative, my inner dialogue, my critiquing, my analyzing, without any of that, right? Right? And just be poised, just rely on grace, just accept where you are, just surrender to this moment. And I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like seriously. And so what I started to realize was I had no clue how to be in my heart. I had learned from a lot of years of training and cultivating and getting really good at doing this to suppress everything, right? So unless it was acceptable, professional, just somewhat witty, but not too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, unless it was just like basic, <laughs> I wasn't going to let myself experience a full realm of emotions. If I was angry, if I was broken in some kind of way, if I was sad, if I was depressed, if I was discouraged, nobody was going to see that. <laughs> right. I wasn't allowed to be that. So none of that was going to come up. Right. But if you get really good at doing this, and really turning off emotion, then you never get to experience the full spectrum of emotion. So when you shut off emotion, you shut off your creativity, you shut off your vulnerability, you shut off connection, you shut off intimacy, you shut off your future in a lot of ways. And you can still push and you can still hustle and you can still get results. So don't get that twisted, but you're not gonna have true fulfillment and joy because you can't experience it because you shut it down. Okay. So I was learning how to be a whole human. I was learning how to get a new rhythm <laughs> that would really very much serve me and help me to find myself. I got lost in all the doing. I got lost in all the adventures out in the world and, and a lot of hard lessons, right? So it took slowing down. It took processing. It took a lot of work. Okay. So what I learned and what I encourage you to think about is think about a time where you know that you actually felt experientially in your own soul, how you shifted from here to your heart. When did that happen for you? When did it happen for you? So I was talking with a dear friend today and um, she was sharing an experience with me and she asked for feedback. Okay. And so I was sharing feedback, what I would do, not telling her what to do, not giving advice, but just feedback. Right. So based on my own experience or based on if that was happening to me, here's how I'd approach it. So if that applies, take it, if it doesn't, whatever. So I was talking with her and I, she was assessing a situation and determining what it meant because ultimately we could decide what we're going to focus on the meaning that we attach to it, and then the action that we're going to take because of that. Powerful stuff, what I just said there. Okay, so she's ascribing meaning to this thing. So something happened, she's attaching meaning to it, and now she's deciding what does that mean and what action am I going to take, right? So this particular thing, though, was confusing because heart matters are always interesting matters. We don't always have a language for it. We're not always able to communicate what's in our heart. And if we're not aware of ourselves and developing in these areas of being able to be better communicators and be more empathetic and all these things, it is difficult. So I shared with her, there was a time in my life where I, as I shared with you, had learned how to shut down emotion. So 
not that I couldn't laugh, not that, that I couldn't be fun, not that I couldn't just have a good time, right? But to some degree, there wasn't the fulfillment because I couldn't be these other things. Okay. So I could, I was only comfortable with certain ways of expressing myself. Hopefully this is making sense. So I realized that for years of my life, I couldn't cry. Nada, like nothing. Like I couldn't, I didn't know how to release everything that had built up. I would do it through athletics. I would do it, um, through, learning new knowledge and applying new knowledge, but I didn't know how to just feel something or how to release emotion. I knew how to do some, but crying was not one of them. So I remember a particular season, and this was part of my coming to know God story, but I remember where I started to just feel tears on my face. And I'm like, huh. And the moment, I know the exact moment where I was, what was happening. And then after that, I just remember also being alone at the time I was living, you know, in this condo by myself, thank God, because that would have been really weird if I had a roommate. Um, But I just remember times where I would just sob. And there was these wails that came out of me that I had never heard before. And it was freaky even to me because I was like, what is happening to me? And the revelation that I got in this season was that there was incredible heart healing that had to happen because unless there was this release, unless there was this acceptance, unless there was this letting go, there would be no new future. There would be more dysfunction. There would be more of these patterns. There would be more of these things that you're afraid of because it's like a self-fulfilling thing. And it's what you're wired for because you won't let anything else in. So the best way I can explain it is my heart completely shattered so that God could put it back a heart that was new. And honestly, how I can describe that to you is that you're not repeating old experiences. You're not ruminating on things. You're not bringing up past trauma. Like it's a new heart. It's a heart that is pure, literally. So, but I didn't know that at the time, again, I'm like sobbing and feeling like a total weirdo because that's a total foreign experience and I can't stop it. And there's pain and it's crazy and I don't know what to do. Right. Like it was just, it was nuts. And so it was healing. It was like, I don't know if you ever had this experience, but it's like somebody can hug you and that embrace alone waterworks. It just unlocks whatever you've been holding up so long. Somebody hugs you and you're just able to release it all. Right. It almost felt like that. It was like a big God hug. Like, I'm just going to hold you until we get back to peace. Deep. I know. Okay. So things that were happening, right? Like, I'm sorry that that happened to you. That should never happen. I'm sorry for those betrayals. I'm sorry for that abandonment. I'm sorry for that shock. I'm sorry for that trauma. I'm sorry that you were treated that way. I'm sorry that that was your experience, right? Like I have more for you. I never meant that for you, right? And basically if you let it go, if you trust me, if you let it go, I will open all of this to you it broke my heart wide open. So rather than feeling like you've got bits and pieces, like you've left yourself in different pieces and parts of you have been taken. It's like, you just (laughs) put your heart in the hands of God and you let him have his way. Okay. So I share that because that was a very real, and it wasn't just like a, a few hours. This went on for a long period of time. Like I was definitely in that particular healing process that particular healing journey was probably two years okay not the crying but like that really real discovery process of like what the heck was happening there was a two-year journey that was preceded by like many years of learning but you get where I'm coming from so just to give you context that was a very real experiential education moment of learning how to make the shift from my head to my heart You're so used to showing up here, but I'm going to teach you if you stop doing this, if you stop leaning on your own understanding and you trust in me with all your heart, which I'm going to break it open so that you can do, you're going to have something totally new. Woo! That is deep. And I hope that blessed somebody. It's for somebody. You're welcome. Um, But that is the, the invitation that I'm going to give you is to really reflect on a time where you've shifted from head to heart. Okay. Because your gold 
right? As you mine your soul, as you mine your life, your gold is going to come from living with your heart wide open. And how do you do that? You do that by, you can activate it. So what I learned in yoga, bringing you back to this yoga experience was a heart meditation. It was like an open heart meditation. And I brought this into my life and many times and many seasons. And I'll just walk you through it and just allow you to integrate this into your life if you choose. But what I normally do is I put a hand on my heart and I let myself feel that my heart is beating. So I'm not making it do that. And that right there, alignment, right? Okay. I'm not in control, but I know the one who is, and I'm going to actively choose right now to trust. Or I also will put my hand on my stomach, right? Just like right on your core and like a balloon, I'll let it go out and in and just deep breathing breaths, right? Again, who put this breath in my lungs? I didn't do that. So that just brings me like center. Okay. And as, as I'm doing that, I'll just breathe until I calm down. And you can tell when you go from right to like freaking out to just calm, present, poise, go for poise. Okay. When you get here, I'll usually close my eyes and I will visualize words that are strong, good charges, things that I want to activate. So I'll visualize fearless and just let images come to your mind. I'll visualize empowered. I'll visualize confident. I'll visualize victorious. I'll visualize radiant. I'll visualize uh, influential. I'll visualize uh, strong, right? Powerful. Authority. Uh, power? No. You get where I'm going. <laughs> Um, I visualize these words, right. And just let whatever images come. Okay. And that's doing something for me. And then I also visualize light coming into my entire being. Okay. That is centering me. That is grounding me. That's making me solid. And I like gold, but pay attention to whatever light is coming into you. And that's teaching me to be a good receiver. I'm not doing, I'm not pushing, I'm not forcing, I'm receiving. I'm learning to be a really good receiver. And then once that light comes in me, God is renewing my mind. God's renewing your right spirit in me, right? My mind is being transformed and healed. Any thoughts that weren't supposed to be there, they're being shifted right now. I'm being recalibrated, right? So just picture that. Like, it's like you're plugging in your iPhone. That's what's happening to me. I'm plugging in to my source, right? My mind is being transformed. A right spirit is being renewed in me. The right heart, so I'm able to see like God sees, right? Cool. So now I'm centered. Woo! And okay, so I'm receiving light. And now I'm visualizing light coming out of me. I'm visualizing light coming out of the room that I'm sitting in while I'm doing this. I'm visualizing it touching family, touching friends, touching my neighborhood, touching my work environment, touching your finances, touching whatever. You just picture light coming out of you and it's healing light, restorative light, reformative light, right? You just picture that. And then as you do that, you're in a freaking peaceful state, okay? And then from there, I visualize whatever challenge, whatever opportunity, whatever, whatever item that comes to mind that has been locked, limited, holding me back in some kind of way. I picture that sucker with this light, with this wisdom, with this new fearlessness, with this poise. And I visualize the whole experience. What would this look like? if I was totally victorious in this, what would it look like if I freaking crushed this? What would it look like if this was resolved? What would this look like if this went the best way that I could imagine it going? And I visualize that. And it's training my mind to have faith, to trust that it's going to go that way or better than that, right? To actively create evidence and a story for what I want to have happen because what we're so good at doing is getting ourselves out of alignment. <laughs> we're so good at getting ourselves all tangled up when what you want to do is get yourself untangled. Okay. So that is an exercise that I would encourage you to do one for yourself, claim, take ownership of the experiences where you know, and you know that you're capable of shifting from head to heart and how that shifted everything. And then when you need to, you can now use this exercise to activate yourself into your heart space so that you can live with your heart wide open. And that's not something that is scary, intimidating. That is you leaning in to the fear. That is you going after it. Living with your heart open is going after fear. It's, I might get hurt, but I'm still going in. 
I've been hurt, but I'm still going to love again. And I'm still going to choose love. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I know who does. I'm going to go, right? Your heart is open. I'm willing to move forward. I'm willing to go after this, right? So hopefully this blessed you. And I'm just going to give you one last thought. Our lives are really a result of the input. So this isn't just what you eat, but it's what you're putting in your mind. It's what you're feeding your spirit. It's what you're storing up in your heart. All of that's going to come out of you (laughs) and you're going to see it in your reality. So if you don't like the results of what you see in your life right now, consider the input. Okay. And if you know that this blessed you, or if somebody you know could totally be blessed by this word, subscribe to this channel and also share, copy the link and share this with a friend. All right, guys, until next time, stay blessed.